Hello, um, I'm going to go through a series of tutorials on making a game character and animating that character and bringing it into a game engine like Unity and getting it running around in there. Um, this is just going to be a quick overview of what the tutorial is going to be about. Um, after talking to a friend of mine, she suggested that I start from the very basics and go through the entire process, so I'll do that. The first bit's going to be a little bit boring, but it kind of has to be done. So um, this is kind of just how I'm planning on laying out the tutorial, which is first off, I'm going to model the arm, then the hand, then the torso, and then the lower body in all in separate videos, I'd imagine. Um, the reason I'm doing the hand early in the tutorial is a lot of tutorials I watch um, never actually get around to doing the hand. And they just leave you with a character model with no hands and sometimes no head even. So not the best. So I'm going to get out of the way early and kind of dodge that bullet, I think. Um, so this particular video is just mainly talking about boring stuff but it's stuff that you need to be aware of when you're making a character model that you know you're going to be animating so to start off I'm going to talk about reference images and what makes a good one and what makes a not so good one so this first one is what I would call a not so good reference um, you look at it and you see there is a front view here so you have your front view and you have your side view, which is kind of what you're looking for. But when you look at this, um, the character's in a kind of action pose, so already you kind of see it's not a great pose to start out modeling. You'd rather have her in more of this kind of stance she's in in her three quarter view, where both her of her arms are down. But um, so you'll have this, and another thing to notice is. If I draw a line down the middle of her body, you see it doesn't actually go down the middle of her body. Her head is kind of looking one way, her body is turned the other way, and her legs are out to the side. And her arm is up, so not really useful. And same thing with the side view, you're looking, you can see both her breasts, you can see both her legs, so straight away you know it's not actually fully side on, it's more of a perspective side view. So if you were looking at this though as a beginner you might think this is a pretty good reference image but it's not. So what is a good reference image though is this one. So on this one you can already see it's a lot less detailed. Uh, he has no clothes on which is a lot better for modeling as well. Um, you can see all the details you need to actually see. Um, and as well as that, if you notice when I draw a line down the middle of this guy, oops, um, you can see it goes down the middle and um, he's pretty much the same on both sides so that's good. And another thing is if I draw lines across to the side view all these major points on the model will line up so his head lines up properly um, his shoulders line up with his shoulders, same with the pecs, um, same with his waist, his wrists line up, his knees will line up, and his ankles line up. So all the kind of major areas you want to be looking at are going to line up in both views when you're modeling, so that will make it a lot easier on you. Um, the next thing I want to touch on is topology for more for animating than overall topology, but um, something to notice, or that I notice a lot, is people will model something without thinking about animating it later. And this makes it a lot harder on yourself. So a good thing to notice is this example of a straight straw being bent. Everyone knows what that looks like. I mean, you'll bend the straw and it'll kind of break the straw where it bends. and just gets worse every time you bend it really. So that's what's going to happen if you have say an arm with no edge loops where you need them. 
if you don't think about animating you mightn't have those loops because it'll look fine in a stationary position but when you try to bend anything it'll the topology will just deform in crazy ways so an example of good topology then is the bendy straw which same kind of thing but it has a bend in it for that exact purpose because they know it's going to be bent and they want it to keep its shape so same thing here you just flow down these lines are kind of imitating where the polygons would be so you see they flow down and as it curves the polygons kind of rotate with that curve and space out evenly so it'll cause less creasing and when you're bending and less stretching on the far side so that's a pretty good kind of way to think about it I think um, the next thing is just specific areas that this kind of thing is going to crop up when you're modeling so the shoulder um, the elbow the wrist the upper leg the knee and the ankles and they're just kind of areas that's most common it's going to happen across the midriff and the neck and places like that as well but they're a lot easier to handle um, and here's just a kind of example of what you'd kind of do to solve the problem in an elbow where you just kind of space the polygons a bit closer together pinch them in on one side push them out on another just so it knows which direction they're meant to flow and that's just kind of the similar thing with a little bit of a different kind of quad in there but you'll see both of those ways very common when you look at elbow topology and um, the last thing I want to look at is just kind of show you this on an actual model so as you can see here I've highlighted the blue polygons are edge loops that go around the arm so I'll go around this way and come back around the back of the arm and join back up with itself nice and smoothly and same with the shoulder joint just goes around a nice circle and the polygons know exactly where they're meant to be flowing and a way you can do this to kind of help yourself visualize it if you're doing low poly modeling sometimes people kind of find it hard to see the flow of the polygons um, but if you throw a turbo smooth on in 3ds max you'll notice that you kind of see the flow of all the polygons a little easier and you'll see any kind of oddities a lot quicker where there's pinching and stuff like that and you can see the edge flow is still there the smooth circles are still there the lines down the arm are still in a nice smooth line so um, yeah that's kind of the main things you need to be aware of when you're starting the character model and these are just the reference images I'm going to use to start the character so you can see here he's straight on and then side view and um, we're just going to attach these to planes in 3ds max and use them as our references so i'll just jump in and do that now in max and we'll start off by drawing out a plane and putting its segments down to one and the size to two so it's square and now i'm just going to rotate it 90 degrees and move it up one meter in the Z and move it back three meters in the Y and then press M to bring up the material editor you might have this compact one but if you do that's fine I just used the slate one myself and um, so I'm gonna bring in a material and for the diffuse color I'm going to choose bitmap and go up to where I have those pictures apply that front view and assign it to the material and show it in the viewport and there we have our front uh, reference and you'll notice it's quite pixely so when you're looking at it it might be kind of hard to follow stuff so to fix this all you do is go up here to the shaded or to where it has your render viewport settings 
go down to materials and go over realistic materials with maps now you'll see it's a lot crisper so now all I'm doing is holding down shift and rotating to create a copy of this plane and I'm just going to put that tree on the X so it's back over there and now I'm going to make a copy of this material unplug this bitmap and plug in the side view and then apply that and now we have both our views so the next video is going to start the actual modeling and I'm going to start with the arm like I said and the hand in the next video so I'm going to split those videos up into hopefully around 10 minute videos each so rather than doing an entire model in one big massive video of like an hour long video I think it'll be a little less intimidating for people if I do these little sections like I showed in the first picture here um, in this one if I do the arm in a video, the hand in a video connect those together do the torso in another video, connect them all and just go like that. I think it'll be easier if it's in little sections and a little less intimidating for anyone who's not entirely comfortable doing character modeling which would be I assume why you're watching this video in the first place. So thanks a lot and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.